Hello, everyone, and welcome to the official Lens Baby launch party. Uh, very excited to be here with you today. Uh, first, just want to make sure before we get started here that you all can hear me. Uh, if you can, please, in the chat, just let me know that you can hear me. Um, just say yes or no. Uh, well, I guess if you said no, you wouldn't be hearing me, would you? Um, so welcome, everyone. If you can, let us know where are you watching from? Where are you at today? Um, we have people from all over the world. Wow, we have um, folks. Let us know where you are, Jillian. Hi, welcome, Jillian. Arian, hello. Uh, Christian, hi, welcome. Christine, welcome, welcome. Ariel's in Florida. Stan is in New Hampshire. Welcome, my friends. We got Canada, Portland, Oregon, Sydney, Australia, guys watching from around the world. We're very, very excited. Um, as you may have seen in the email we sent earlier today, we have officially launched the Double Glass 2, which you can learn more about right now if you scan this QR code right here that we just put on the screen, um, or you can go over to lensbaby.com to learn more. Today is going to be an incredibly exciting day where we're gonna share a few hours of content from our Lens Baby ambassadors, our co-founder Craig Strong, and more. We're gonna go in and dive into the details of what the Double Glass 2 is. We're gonna talk about why we've decided to bring that back. We're going to talk about how you use it in practical applications from macro photography and flower photography to portrait photography to just landscape photography and even travel. We're gonna get in and cover so many bases, which we're so excited to be here with you guys today. Um, we have folks watching from Denver, from Scotland. What's up, Scotland? Uh, from Michigan, Columbus, Ohio, Tucson, Arizona, everywhere. This is absolutely incredible. Guys, we have over 10 incredible instructors and ambassadors and educators who are going to come on and share with you about Double Glass 2. Again, you can learn more. You scan this QR code. We are shipping them now and today live. So if you want to add Double Glass 2 to your Lens Baby and photography repertoire, now is the time to do it, my friends. Um, we are very excited about this product and so much so that we've dedicated this whole day to being able to help you learn more about double class too. So if you go to lensbaby.com or you scan that QR code, you will get access to uh, everything double glass too, including a bunch of incredible videos, some that we're going to share with you today, some education and more. So that said, everyone, we have hundreds of people watching from around the world. Thank you very much for being here. We are super excited to have you here today. Um, thank you as always for supporting Lens Baby for our mission and our goal of helping creatives to shoot extraordinary. Um, it is an honor and a pleasure as usual to be a part of this with you. And so without further ado, my friends, we are going to get into the launch party. So one more time before we get going, just let us know where you're watching from. I'm going to call some of you guys out. And as you participate through the day, I'm saying there's probably going to be some surprises in store for you. We got Lois in Tucson. We got Barbara. Good morning, Barbara. Welcome. We got folks from Mooresville, Indiana, um, Melbourne, Australia. It's like 1 a.m. or something there, right? Uh, Nevada, Atlanta, Georgia, California, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Chicago and more. Guys, again, you can scan the QR code. This will pop up throughout the day. Um, if you cannot watch the entire event, good news for you is that this will be airing all day. We are live now and then we will play the replay throughout the day so you can get all of the Double Glass 2 information that you need. And we're very excited. Thank you again for being here, everyone. Welcome. It's an honor to have you here and let's get into it. Hi, I'm Craig Strong, co-founder of Lens Baby, and I'm here to unbox our newest product. Now, this product is, I don't know, 20-some years in the making, but if we look at the very first time we came out with the Lens Baby, which was 19 years ago in February of 2004, at a trade show in a little tiny booth, my co-founder Sam Pardue and I brought out this crazy little lens, a little flexible lens. Now the way it focused was different, but the most important thing about this original lens or the original lens baby was the way it saw the world. It sees the world with one spot of focus and gradual blur as you move away from that spot. Now we call that the sweet spot effect and the double glass 
Optic in 2008 came out with the uh, sharpest 50 millimeter version of that with drop-in apertures. It was part of an optic swap system that continues to this day. And our newest product builds on that with the double glass too. So we're taking that original idea of the sweet spot of focus and turning that into a more feature rich lens with better build quality for our optic swap system that includes uh, two versions. I've got the optic by itself. So if you've already got an optic swap body, you can go get the optic and, and put it in there. And then we've got the double glass two lens, which is an optic in a body. And that's what I'm going to start with here. So we've got, let's see, we've got a mirrorless version. This is the Nikon Z version of the Composer Pro 2 with double glass 2 and caps on either end. I'm going to put that onto my lens body. And when this is pointed straight ahead, the effect that it has is one area of sharp focus in the middle. When you tilt, you move that sweet spot off center. I would encourage you, if you have not shot with a sweet spot lens before, just go ahead and center it, point it straight ahead, just eyeball it. You can get it really close to centered, and then you can uh, look for that sweet spot in the center. Not until you get used to that finding that sweet spot and seeing the center of that sweet spot which is where all the resolving power is and consistently being able to focus that uh, should you start to tilt but once you're ready you can move that sweet spot around and be able to match your composition with a, a tilted lens often the rule of thirds and whatnot but let's talk about the optic in this thing because that's what's new We've had about 25 different optics since we came out with the optic swap system in 2008. This is the double glass too. In 2008, we came out with the double glass. The double glass is incredibly sharp and it had exclusively drop in apertures. So it came with a set of round apertures that you would have to, to uh, pull out in order to change from F 2.5 to 2.5. 0.8 to 4 to 5, 6, and so on. The main difference that we've got here, besides all metal build quality with this, is that it has a 12-bladed aperture. So it's very round at all aperture settings from f 2.5 to f22. As you stop it down to the darker apertures, your sweet spot grows. As you open it up, your sweet, sh sweet spot shrinks. That is what we have here. It comes in a mirrorless version. It also comes in a SLR version. I'm going to put this on my Nikon, take my beloved Velvet 28 off of my D800, and it replaces the entire lens. It does not go on the front of an existing lens. So I have just changed from a 28 millimeter variable velvet lens, which is one of my all time favorites, especially for night sky photography, to a 50 millimeter sweet spot lens that has an internal aperture and it also has drop in apertures. So these apertures are not round, unlike the, uh, the double glass that we came out with in 2008. They are shaped, so I am going to grab one of these shapes and put it in here, and you can see it, it is just held in uh, by magnetism, which is magic, and you get to put this in, and you can turn your entire lens to change the orientation to get the texture exactly what you want in your background, but these shaped apertures 
put a texture in your background. If you have points of light, those points of light take on the literal shape of your aperture. But more often, it just creates a subtle effect of, I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but that background has a shape to it. It has a texture to it that doesn't look like a normal lens. Now, a lens baby isn't gonna be like a normal lens because it is a sweet spot of focus and it has tons of blur even at the same plane as your subject matter, unlike a normal depth of field where everything on that plane is generally in focus on a normal lens. This has a curved depth of field. And so as you move away from that spot of focus into the corners and into the edges of your image, more and more focus effects happen. And so these shaped apertures are really ideal for sweet spot lenses like this. And so to have the option to use a 12 bladed aperture just for your normal sweet spot of photography, uh, sweet spot of focus images, uh, and then to be able to come in and um, drop in a shaped aperture that is going to give you exactly what you want. Now it comes with nine of these and you can see this one is slots and those slots when you're you do them vertical you do them horizontal completely changes everything in the background now you can also take these apertures and you can stack them so that you can create shapes you can do all you can get up to three deep and rotate them on each other to get exactly what you want so there's really infinite options in terms of the shaped apertures so that is the lens itself which is a lens body and that lens body is the Composer Pro 2. And the other one is the optic itself. So I'm going to open this up here. The optic is ready to go into your existing lens body. It has all the features. It has the drop-in apertures. It just does not have the lens body. We have um, the, the Spark. This is actually the original Spark, but we, we sell the Spark 2.0 um, that, that allows you to focus on the fly and tilt on the fly, very spontaneous. It's great for video, a lot of music videos use it. Um, and then we also have the, uh, the Composer Pro 2, which is the most recent iteration. We've had three different iterations of the Composer, but it'll fit all three. So if you have a lens body, go get your optic and throw it in there and have fun. This is, this is a culmination of you know, 20 some years of working on this sweet spot of photography. 19 years ago it was the first time we brought it to the market and it sees in a way that no other camera lens sees. And being able to vary that with an internal 12 bladed aperture that's round as you stop it down and drop in apertures that can be stacked. There's tons of variation. The build quality on this is better than any of the previous sweet spot lenses where everything that you're touching is, is metal. Um, you probably shouldn't touch the glass, but there's glass in there too. And it, it has tons of features that, that are, are the culmination of all the best things about sweet spot photography, sweet spot of focus photography that we've been able to offer to, over the 19 years since we first brought it out. You are the key to this though, because if you can come in and say, okay, how does this help me see the world in a way that either I don't see and I would like to see, or that I do see and I can't portray with any other camera lens that I have. The variability of this between the tilting, the various apertures, the drop-in apertures, it gives you so many options. Go out, play with it, have fun. We're excited to see what you do with it. You always blow our socks off as far as what it is that can be done with this. We are excited to see what, what is is in the works and will soon be created because, uh, because you're gonna pick this up and find a place for it. And um, there is a learning curve. Go, go learn, go have fun, go play, enjoy.
Regina Boston, and I'm a Lens Beta Ambassador based out of Maryland. I had the honor of beta testing the new Double Glass 2 uh, optic for the Composer Pro, and it is amazing. I absolutely love this optic. So with the optic and the Composer Pro, just like the other optics, you just need to gently push down, and your optic comes out. This is what the optic looks like. And it goes right into the Composer Pro. So stick that in there and you just kind of push down a little bit and then you hear it click in place, you know you're good. Take that off. So the DJI 2 has an aperture of f2.5 all the way up to f22. It is an amazing lens. The cool thing about the being on the Composer Pro is that you can go ahead and shift it and move it back and forth, and then that way your focus kind of shifts within your um, your plane. Or I'm sorry, your image, and then you get that nice kind of like sweet spot, and then all the beautiful bokeh that comes around it. So one of the really cool things about this optic is these wonderful little aperture discs that come. This is what it looks like. You open this up and you have an array of discs. So you have like this one, like a whirlpool. And let's see. My favorite is the birds. Fun little heart. So many options in here. Let's see. Oh, and another favorite of mine. Ooh, fun little lines. So, to put these in, we'll start with the lines. Right in here, you just drop it in, and there you go. It's in, you're good to go. Now, how to get it out? That's a great question. On this cool little tool, You take this bottom piece off, there's a magnet. And that magnet goes right in there and it helps pull the disc out. I'm gonna put that right back in there, drop it right back in there and take some pictures. I love about the DJI 2 is that you can put macro filters on your optic. So these are the lens baby macro filters. There's a plus one, a plus two, and a plus four. Sometimes I like to be a little crazy and just stack them all together and just screw them on right like that. There you go. So I have all three macro filters screwed right into the DJI 2, and we're gonna get up close and personal with nature.
Hey there. So right now I have the DJI 2 in and I have uh, the bird's aperture disc here and I'm going to do a few creative uh, portraits with my son. So follow along. Right now I'm shooting at f2.5. My ISO is 400. pretty cool all the texture that the aperture discs add in camera uh, to your image. And with this lens, you have that sweet spot of focus right there in the middle. And then with the aperture just it adds all the texture to your bokeh and the background of your images. Right, so that's the bird disc. I want to change this one out. Pop this off, off the bottom, and you stick it right in there, and then the disc comes right out. So let's go with another favorite of mine is the Whirl Whirlpool disc. And again, you just sit there and stick it right in and it falls right into place. The cool thing is, is that you can add uh, two more aperture discs in here. So if you want to stack multiple aperture discs and create something unique, um, I mean, they're all going to be unique for sure, but it's really cool that you have like endless possibilities of stacking multiple uh, aperture discs. So right now I have the Whirlpool and let's see how this looks. I like all the texture that I added into the sunlight right there. And then look kind of right past them. thing about it being you know an uh, optic disc is going in the Composer Pro you can kind of shift and move back and forth to see where you want to move your soft spot. So I'm going to shift a little bit to the left. pull in right now and I'm going to use it to create all this fun bokeh 
around him. Can you look over your shoulder towards Jules for me? At towards Jules and like your eyes. And then look off that way. Can you put your hand up on your arm? Yeah. to share Lens Baby's Double Glass 2 Optic. Its sweet spot of focus combined with any of the nine aperture discs lends to a unique set of textures and creative bokeh in your images. Hi, I'm Kay Cantors. I'm a family photographer. My subjects are mostly my own kids, but I also do take clients. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about using Lens Baby's newest optic, part of their optic swap system, the Double Glass 2. I shoot with a uh, Canon R6 mirrorless. I have on an adapter and I have the Composer Pro 2. When you get your double glass optic, it will also include a variety of aperture discs. These aperture discs create some really fun, creative effects within the camera. All of it is done in camera, no post-processing required. Um, so there's a large variety of discs, including some whole ones that you can use um, like an X-Acto knife or special um, punches to create your own. Um, when I do my session for you today, I will make sure to show you what aperture disc I'm using. Um, 
And sometimes I decide on the spot, depending upon what the environment is. Sometimes they have it planned out. So anyway, here's the double glass two. It has a variable um, aperture of 2.5 all the way up to 22. So you just go ahead and pop it into your Composer Pro 2. Just like that. When you take the lens cap off, you're gonna see those little magnetic pieces that hold the aperture discs. So you can shoot with or without the aperture discs and receive very different results with what you're shooting. So to demo how that works, pop it open. I have the slot disc. You simply set it inside the optic and it's right in there for you to use. When you want to get it out, your little aperture holder, the end piece pops off and there's a little magnet on here and you simply touch it up against the aperture and pull it off and store it inside for safekeeping. Today I'm going to show you uh, different ways that you can use the double glass optic to create some emo emotive portraits. Um, I'm going to use my own children as my models. Bribing was required. We're going to do some outdoors, some indoors, some natural light, and some off-camera flash um, with and without some of the aperture discs. Um, and again, I'll go over which discs I use in all of the situations that I'm shooting. I will also be including a self-portrait. It's not something that I typically do, but I just really love this optic for the creative effects that it creates. It had kind of lends to a nostalgia and an old feeling. Um, so we're going to have some fun with these today. I hope you enjoy. Thanks for joining. In the first session that I'm doing here with my teenage daughter, I used the Sunburst Aperture Disc. I chose this alleyway because it has some really colorful murals on the walls. I really like the string lights hanging and a fun surprise that we saw when we got there was the steam coming out of one of the exhaust uh, vents. That uh, steam is a little less obvious in my final images because it is not in the sweet spot of focus that I captured. So it blends in a little bit more with the texture that you'll see cre uh, created by the aperture disc. But what you will notice uh, in the background areas and the framing around my daughter is the texture used uh, from this aperture disc. Sorry, the texture that was created from the aperture disc uh, did some fun things to the lights, uh, to the skies, and to the brick um, in the background. This lens is so much fun to use for senior portraits and in any case capturing your kids uh, in any location really but this was a really fun spot. Uh, we braved the cold and despite having some uh, numb fingers I think it really captured some amazing images. My aperture stayed the same at f2.5 my shutter speed was 1 over 250, and I had a variable ISO depending upon where she was in the alley and what the light was doing. I chose this specific location because I love how the trees, the grasses, all add layers to my image along with the backlight. It's really going to do a lot to enhance the uh, textures that you'll see. Um, the backlight especially helps bring out some of the textures in between the tree branches and the grasses. And you'll see those um, more in the framing around the sweet spot of focus that you'll notice. So it's wicked cold out here, but my daughter is being a trooper. And I have to bribe her with lots of things, but she is doing it. So we move just a little bit further down the path to a little more open space. I did have my slot discs in, but I'm gonna change it to the birds because I really like what it's gonna do with the trees. And I'm thankful that even though my fingers are fumbling in this cold, it came out really quickly. So now I'm gonna use the bird disc. Brrrr. 
And I will say she hates the hat, but like I said, I'm doing some bribing. Okay, right, hand draw. And as I'm taking the picture, all I'm doing is sliding around my Composer Pro until I like what I see. It does different things with the sun and it lets me see the creative blur in a different way depending upon the angle that I set it at. So I'm just continuing to shoot. My daughter is really miserable here. Um, just trying to manage her body heat as well as you can see. Um, and I'm just kind of playing around as I'm shooting, tilting the Composer Pro, trying to find my sweet spot. Um, and these are the resulting images that you can see. You'll really notice the unique textures that these aperture discs add. Um, you'll notice the sweet spot of focus. And then the further out you move from that, you can see um, in this particular, particular image, the slot disc was used. You can see uh, the birds um, in this one with the hat. Again, you can see the slot disc and the textures here. Um, so I really loved how the backlighting really enhanced the textures that you see. In this portrait session with my oldest, um, it's mid-afternoon. It's a very overcast winter day. There is a set of patio doors to my right. Um, and then I have a reflector set up to try and bounce some of that light back onto her face. Um, because it's so cold outside, I really had to get creative in trying to add some layers to this image so that you could see what the aperture discs do with different types of light. So with the string light here, you'll see that my star aperture changes those lights into star shapes, which were really fun, I thought, with this image. Um, I also decided I wanted to make it a little more whimsical. So I, you'll see coming up in some footage, I created... Uh, some glittery overlays with the star aperture disc that I then applied to my image in um, Photoshop just to give it a little bit more um, magic or oomph. Um, because again, the magic of these discs is that they create cool textures or in this specific situation, they change the shape of the light. Um, and again, with the star disc, I chose that specific one because I liked how it kind of went with this theme that I'm shooting in this. Um, and here you'll see my setup for the starry bokeh. It's just construction paper, uh, a very f uh, small sprinkling of just standard gold glitter. And you can see that I'm just angling my Composer Pro in different directions to try and see what it does to the shape of the stars shooting in a straightforward position they'll just be a perfectly shaped star but then when you angle it tipping it one direction or another it kind of extends or lengthens some of the edges of the stars and I ended up choosing um, a final image where they're kind of bent to uh, frame in a circular shape around uh, the crown that she'll have and you'll see in the final image how that looks it was really a fun just simple way to add a little extra layer when you're shooting indoors and perhaps you don't have the same natural layers that you would have shooting in an outdoor setting so this is that bokeh layer that I created after darkening the blacks and the final images using the double glass optic to take a snowy natural light portrait. Hey, 
Okay, so I shot those at f2.8. Again, this is the disc that I used. I'm terrible at remembering the name, so I'll have to look at my little diagram. I didn't end up swapping it out because I really liked the effect that it had with the light behind the trees. These are some of the... This is the last image that I took. You can see my settings. Sorry, there's a little glare there. This is really hard to look at. And these are my final images. I've shared my settings. My ISO changed a little bit depending upon uh, what direction he was facing. When I came back out the second day um, to shoot in the freshly fallen snow, obviously there was a lot more light coming into my lens. So um, there was a little bit more of a difference there though. I did keep shooting wide open at f2.5 because I really wanted to make the um, textures provided by the aperture discs uh, as noticeable in my final images as possible. He is a squirrely little guy uh, and sometimes can be a little tricky to shoot. Um, he tries too hard, um, so we just like to play a little bit and capture him in his natural element. Um, but these were really fun and I love the color pop against the white of the snow and of course the textures uh, that you get with this optic are just incredible almost like a painting, uh, like brush strokes, depending upon uh, which disc you're using. For this self-portrait, I used a white blanket with a clear plastic shower curtain liner. I laid them on the floor and draped white string lights and fairy lights behind me, as well as where I was going to lay. I positioned myself on the floor, having my camera stacked on a set of books and using my cell phone as my remote shutter. I liked to use the slot aperture disc for this picture because I like how it changed the string lights to look like old Hollywood glam lights. You can see that I adjusted my color somewhat in post-processing. Thanks for joining me today. And if you'd like, please check me out on Instagram at Kate Canters.
just got a package from Lynn's baby. Let's see what's in it. All right, let's see what's inside of this. I think I know what it is, but uh, let's open it together. Ooh, okay, so this is the newest product from Lynn's baby. It is the Double Glass 2 with Composer Pro. It's a 50 millimeter 2.5 tilt lens. Um, it's got a sweet spot effect to it, and it has drop-in creative bokeh effects. So let's unpack this and see, see how it works. All right, so I got it open. Um, let's see what's in it. So first things first is the Aperture Discs. Um, it comes in a little container like this. And fun little note, these uh, are perfect to fit on a film uh, container. It's perfect little size, right? It's cute. Okay, so this pops off and got to leave it attached and out come the little discs. So we've got a bunch of different options here. That's the first one. Some little birds. This is not a new system for Lens Baby. They have the creative bokeh um, aperture discs for multiple uh, lenses. So, um, most of these are all the same. Let's see. I love the star one. Where is it? There it is. A little star one, super cute. And they also come with blank your own. All right, we're gonna put these back in to the container. Just snap this on. And then the other cool thing about this, which we'll use here in a minute, um, this little lid right here is a magnet at the bottom, and this is what you use to get the creative aperture out of the lens. A lot of people didn't know that, and so I figured we might need to put that in there. Um, there's the magnet. All right, let me put this to the side. All right, so let's get to the actual lens now. I shoot on a Nikon Z6. So here is the product, the lens. Super cute, right? All right, so let's take the lens cap off. So we've got the double glass two optic, the double glass two optic here. And you twist like a pill bottle, push down, twist, and it comes right out. We've got the apertures. It goes from 2.5 to f22, and it just clicks around. There's the logo, and then there's the name of the optic. All right, so let's put it back into the Composer Pro. So we find where it hooks up, push down, and secure it in, it clips in. All right, so as you all know, the Composer Pro tilts. We've got the little tilt here, and yeah, there it is. All right, so let's drop in some of the apertures here. And just take it and just pop it right in there, push it down, make sure it's secure, and you are good to go. To get the most effect of the Creative Bokeh, um, it's best to leave the f-stop at 2.5. That'll give you the most effect, um, and it also makes the smallest focus point of the sweet spot. So just keep that in mind when you're shooting. All right, so I'm gonna pop this on my camera. I'm gonna line up the dots, click it on, and we are good to go, good to shoot. All right, if you want to switch out the Creative Optic Disc, um, as I mentioned previously, this little magnetic piece down here, uh, you just stick it in there and it pulls out the um, aperture disc. Then we can place in another one. So we've got the little splat here. We're just gonna drop it in there, make sure it's secure, and on to the next one. So let's take it out for a test run and see what we can create.
Hello, my name is Caitlin Michael and I am a Lens Baby Ambassador. You can find me on Instagram at kshadelphotos and follow along with my Lens Baby journey there. Today I'm excited to be here with you telling you about my first impressions of the Double Glass 2 Optic. I had the amazing opportunity to be testing this optic out over the last couple of months and I found out that this was an optic that I didn't know that I needed. Um, but before I get into that, I did want to point out that this particular video is being shot with the Double Glass 2 optic with the star um, aperture disc. It is being shot at f30 and my ISO is 800. So with the aperture disc, it is making it as if my aperture was um, closed down a little bit more. Um, however, it, on my camera, it is wide open, but it, the aperture disc makes it a little bit darker. So that is something to take into consideration when you are shooting with an aperture disc. Um, but I love that even with a video, I can get all this really neat blur around me that focuses on my face so you can see my face. And I do have that star in there. Um, so we'll have to see after I finish shooting if you can see the star in the bokeh behind me or if it's just still pretty smooth. Um, so I can't wait to check that out when I process this video. Um, but to get started, um, the Double Glass 2 Optic was a lens um, that I didn't know that I needed. I um, was very surprised how much I fell in love with it when it arrived. I have found that it is very versatile. I can go from shooting um, wide open with no aperture discs and it is just like the Sweet 50 because the Double Glass 2 combines um, the capabilities of the Sweet 50 optic, the Double Glass, the original Double Glass, and the Creative Bokeh optic by adding those um, aperture discs in various different fun shapes. Um, so I can take this optic out with me and I can shoot as if um, things that I would want to shoot with the Sweet 50 or I can add in those um, fun discs and I can get some great bokeh um, if I'm shooting something with lights. It was really fun at Christmas time going around with Christmas tree lights as well as all the different um, holiday walkthrough light displays. Um, I really enjoyed getting various different shapes in my bokeh with that. It also adds some excellent texture to the background. Um, if you're familiar with the Soul 45, the bokeh blades um, add some really fun texture that help um, your subject pop. Um, I found some very similar results with the Double Glass 2 when I used various of the um, aperture discs. Some of the ones that are more wide open, like the star and the heart, they give you a very soft um, bokeh, like you can see here in the video. However, if I am using, and you will see examples, if I'm using some of the discs that have more texture to them, like, let's see, um, like the row or the whirlpool, I think this is the whirlpool, or the birds, or even like the lines. Some of these I found they really added, or the diamond, they added a lot of texture to the background that made my subject pop out. And I found it was really fun trying to look at my subject and figure out what mood or feeling I wanted to convey and trying to match that with the shape and um, the texture or bokeh that I knew it would provide. Something else that I found was really fun is um, taking photos with um, some of these shapes and then using them as overlays. And I can't wait to share with you some of the images I created with overlays 
taken with the double glass tube. So at this time, I am going to take you on a journey through the photos that I've taken and talk through my impressions of the double glass while using um, or while showing you those photos. So here we go. Here you see images of where I went when I first fell in love with this optic. I distinctly remember photographing this Ferris wheel and looking at the images and immediately was thinking, this is it. I love this lens. I loved the blur. I loved the texture. I loved trying to match the um, disc, the aperture disc, with the feel I was trying to give and trying to find. I distinctly remember loving the effect of no aperture discs in most of these with the Ferris wheel, but then also loving the effect of the starburst or sunburst on the lights later in this image right here. Um, this is when the lens really started to speak to me as an artist. Speaking of adding texture, I felt when I saw this image that the texture from the aperture disc really created like almost an impressionistic type painting and made the subject pop out of the image. Um, and I really had fun with these alpacas and taking their photos and using the aperture discs. And I noticed the ones with the aperture discs, their faces just popped almost out of the photo more than the ones without a disc. And I felt the ones without the disc were just softer in general and uh, smoother or if the disc was a star or a heart, it was um, a softer blur and bokeh as opposed to one that had more texture as I mentioned earlier in the image, in the video. I found as I was playing with this optic that my favorite um, disc was the star disc. And I loved how it really added to these macro images that I took. And I even got it to match my shirt in this self-portrait. Um, you can't tell, but I have stars on my shirt. And there's star bokeh all around me. Additionally, I was in love with taking video with these and watching as the bokeh changed as I played with focus and really shined. Um, it was really fun for me to play around with video with this and I look forward to experimenting more with video um, as it's not something that I do often but it definitely caught my eye in this for sure and I think this might be one of my favorite videos that I took watching the fountain water change to become stars and sparkle and everything. Here are a few stills that I took of that fountain and what I really like here is the rainbow omni that really just added to that image as well. So I wanted to share those stills with you also. This image was taken using the gold omni reflection wand. You can see the gold uh, burst a little bit down in the bottom portion of the photo. Um, and this was taken without any aperture discs either, so it focuses on that sweet spot, um, sweet 50-ish kind of feel and look. This was another image that spoke to the artist heart in me as soon as I took it I really really enjoy that sun flare that the um, that the double glass 2 picked up when I had it at a slight tilt and I had it more out of focus in order to pick up 
the star bokeh in um, throughout the trees. So as you can see, this lens is great as just a walk around lens and it's so versatile. You can use it like a Sweet 50 and you can also pop in those aperture discs to add some extra texture and bokeh to the background and make your subject pop. I really enjoyed it on my walk at the Riverwalk. So speaking of the Sweet 50 approach to the Double Gloss 2, I know people are going to wonder what is the difference then between the Sweet 50 and the Double Gloss 2. If I already have the Sweet 50, why do I need the Double Gloss 2? Well, I did some comparison pictures here and you can see there is virtually no difference between the Double Gloss 2 and the Sweet 50 when the Double Gloss 2 has no aperture discs. So, why do you need the Double Gloss 2? Well, the Double Gloss 2 is so versatile because you can add those aperture discs. That's what makes it a lens set apart. You can stack the aperture discs, which I have not done yet, but you can create all kinds of bokeh and texture with those aperture discs, or you can keep the aperture discs out and have that smooth bokeh and have that sweet 50 feel, but you only have to take one optic out with you. Additionally, this lens is fantastic for creating overlays that you can use um, on your images to create double exposures, whether you do it in camera or in post-processing. So here's an example of an image that I took um, in order to use later as an overlay. So this is actually a fire and you can see the star bokeh from the star bokeh aperture disc and then I used it to overlay over this image of my dog to show extra celebration because it was her birthday and I really love how it makes these engagement photos pop with those uh, stars that just kind of add some extra sparkle. So I wouldn't say I'm an expert at overlays, that's something I'm still learning, but this lens is pushing me to learn more about creating my own overlays to create some um, double exposures, again, whether it's in camera or in post-processing. Thank you so much for joining me today and following along my first impressions journey with the Double Glass 2 Optic. Again, you can find me on Instagram at kshadelphotos and follow along my lens baby journey there. I look forward to seeing what photos you create using the Double Glass 2 and how you shoot extraordinary.
welcome to my studio. I'm Candy and I'm going to talk you through how I am using the Double Glass 2 to integrate into my portrait photography to get just some pretty cool portraits. Um, please note that uh, I have bodged the background together in a very hobby crafty way. You might call it Hobby Lobby actually. My friends in America say it's Hobby Lobby. So in a very bodged way uh, because I want something dynamic and I feel that this optic works best if you've got reflective items or you've got backlight or something similar. So we're gonna start off with backlight. I am gonna take you for natural though because I know there are those people who just love the natural light. So we are gonna go natural light as well on a different day of a different model, but today we're in the studio. So these are the discs that you get and you get two there where you can make your own patterns if you like and you get this little gadget with a magnet that helps you put them in and out. So in this first image there's no disc, it's just as it is. But as we add disc and you can see from the bow what kind of disc we're using, the light changes quite significantly. I've left the first image up as a reference. The settings have remained the same. So if you're using this in the studio, you need to be careful of your light. So I moved the subject closer. So the bokeh, if you like, the lights behind became a different shape. And I allowed some of the light to peek out from the modifier to give us this great star shooting effect. I realise it's a privilege to have a studio and access to space, so just coming outside. Now this is Milton Keynes, which isn't known for its most beautiful um, views. However, this is a new parking garage, garage, wherever you're from. Have a look. And it's got the most interesting light that comes through here. This is just right out the back of the camera. You can just see how those discs really affect any light or bokeh. It's really nice. I bet this would look great for a music video. I'm now tempted to do it. But anyway, let's get on the trip. He is really friendly, by the way. <laughs> An optic on its own is still brilliant, but adding those discs definitely enhances the portrait. And this rather cheeky footage is basically me telling you, move around your subject to get amazing results because you never know what's going to happen. I also encourage you to swap the discs around. I found myself really loving the Starburst one, but I swapped them over. And I will just say, be mindful of some of the discs do uh, reduce the light let into the lens and actually make sure they're the right way, such as the birds one, because it can make it a little unusual. But look how this Star one really plays on the structures. I really love the Star one and this one. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed using these. And I used it inside at the local coffee shop and it's just lit naturally from a window in front of them. And you can see the shape and all the highlights on the glassware behind. And I just think it adds something to the pictures. So I did say that I would go outside and do some more natural light. I was lucky enough to have that structure of the parking garage or whatever you want to call it, um, which did an amazing backdrop. But a lot of people don't have that. A lot of people live in different areas. So what I'm going to do now is try and do some photos just out on the street around the houses here and then maybe into a small parkland. So you can get an idea of how these lenses can just help. Also, I'm going to try and do images where the, the effect isn't so apparent and then where it's quite apparent if I can. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take you along, you're going to see that and we're going to show you because it, it, no point adding something to your kit if it doesn't give you versatility and it's, you know, it's still an expense and I still think you need to see just the full scope of its capabilities and in my short time I'm going to try and do that. Um, there is so much that I am possibly overlooking here because every time I use these optics I'm learning something new the disc gives me something new I do have my favorite discs I will admit um I I really like the, the line one <laughs> um the heart for some really cutesy stuff the starburst and the star like I'll probably the starburst and the star are probably the one I love the most at the moment but I have not yet done my own one like you know you get the two discs that you can create your own on so in the future I will be doing that but definitely play around. And earlier in the video, I said that make sure the bird one is the right way around because it can sort of make it look odd. Don't worry about it because we did a shot, although it, was slightly, it wasn't great, the effect that the, the, the bird thing did slightly on the slant was great. So ignore my previous advice on that. Okay, let's go. Here's my friend Gemma in the park. I really wanted to show the capability of using these for filming. Yes, it's manual focus, but it's really, really beautiful. Look at that bokeh. The optic itself is manual focus, pretty much like every single one of the lens babies. So bear that in mind. And the Composer Pro allows you to bend and shift the blur action to where you want it to. And I even love this in slow-mo. And this is purely for Gemma to have her Wella hair commercial moment. Watch as she flicks it back. Yes, sorry. <laughs> so the light is coming from behind Gemma here. Um, and you can quite clearly see the effect that the, the optic disc has. The other thing to note is, is that with the Composer Pro, you have to be very cautious where you put the blur effect, if you like, by bending it and pushing it around. I really like it, but it is something to bear in mind. I found it's really helpful if you're using live view. So these are the same image, just ones more zoomed in, if you like. And you can see how even close up, that bokeh is very distinctive. And I really like how it works with the organic structure of the plants here. It's a nice balance. 
Now the disc I used here was the line one, but notice how the lines bend on one side and sort of cross hatch each other on the other side. And this is due to the Composer Pro. So don't just think that you're just gonna get that straight up and down look with your discs. They actually are really much played with by the position of your Composer Pro. So you do not get a lens hood with this optic system. However, backlight is still stunning. If you allow the lens to be caught in the light, you get this beautiful dreamy effect, which is part from the disc and the Composer Pro's natural blurriness, depending on where you bend it to. And even here where you get this softening around the edges, but a very distinct bokeh. It's a very interesting look. And I think it really does stand out. But just to show you it works in a more traditional format, here's some portraits just that are more classic. You can see how the Composer Pro really gives a softening to the image, but those discs really add just a little subtle element, particularly in this last image. So I really do like the focal length of the optic. 50mm, 2.5 aperture. It allows me to have enough depth of field that I can do strong portraits, but it also gives me that dreamy fairy tale like background. But also by then adding a very structural disc, because I love, by the way, the magnetic elements this week is popping out is sublime. There's no dropping anything here and they're not going to fall out. But adding that, if I use like the slot, <laughs> I know I did call in the lines in the other one, um, adding the slots to disc, I can have this very structured look, even with that fairy tale element. The juxtaposition of both of them is just, it just offers something else. I love that it goes into the Composer Pro, so I've already got a Composer Pro, it fits right in. And I, I have to say, I do enjoy having that creative freedom that I can use it with or without the disc. And I also have the opportunity to create my own. I have yet to, I did say I was gonna do it. I have yet to do it yet, because I'm going a bit like, oh, once I get it wrong, but can I buy more discs? Um, so yeah, I did really enjoy it. There are some elements to it that um, I'm yet to explore more. I think it would be incredible as a little slot in for maybe band photography when you photograph them on stage, all that backlight. I would love to see maybe if I get opportunity to use it in wedding portrait. So it is definitely a little optic that I can just slip into my camera bag. It's very really lightweight and I can use it in such a variety of ways. It can be very intentional bokeh or very subtle bokeh. And also even in that gray middle area where it's not very evident, but it's still there, if that makes sense. And I, I was like, I don't know if I'm ever gonna use the heart one and I've used it and I love it, I love it. It just, it's because it's subtle. It's really cool. I can see this working so good in editorial stuff. Like, could you imagine like fashion brands or just using a beauty campaign? And particularly with this dopamine dressing that's so vibrant right now, probably explain why I look like the Grinch's girlfriend today. Um, It's just, it's just fun. And it's so tactile and it, I, I really love it. I have to say this one is probably my favorite of the optics that come with discs. I do really like this one. I will be using it a lot more. In fact, I'm doing a shoot today, which is not gonna be mainly lens baby stuff, but it, I have already got it in my bag ready. So that just shows to show that it's instinctive now to shove it in my bag to go to work with. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please check out all the other content creators who did videos for you. And I'll see you in some of the lens baby Facebook groups. It's been an absolute pleasure to use this and I hope you get as much fun out of it as I have. Bye.
Lisa Bissell. I am a fine art photographer and a Lens Baby ambassador and educator. I work in the genres of nature photography and even more specifically, I really love macro photography, especially working with flowers. I also really enjoy doing street photography, travel photography, self-portraits, and whenever I can, I like to document my family as well. And today I am super excited to share an unboxing with you. The other day I received this package in the mail from Lens Baby, and any day that I receive mail from Lens Baby is a happy day. I'm very excited to see what we have this time. Okay, let's see what we got here. So, first thing I notice is that Lens Baby has packaged this new piece of gear very nicely in environmentally friendly packaging, which I do always appreciate. I'm ready to show you what is in this box. Okay. This is very exciting. Let me show you what I am seeing. This is Lens Baby's newest optic that is part of their optic swap system. It is the Lens Baby Double Glass 2. And the Lens Baby has sent me the combination Lens Baby Double Glass 2 and the Composer Pro 2, which is the housing that all the optic swap optics insert into. And then the whole unit, the optic and the Composer Pro 2 are attached to your camera. Additionally, in this box, is this interesting little case and it is the lens baby aperture discs so before i go ahead and open up this box with the double glass two and our little aperture disc case i do want to let you know about a few things that lens baby told me about this optic um, prior to my receiving it the Double Glass 2 is an optic where the creative effect is a sweet spot where you have a sweet spot of focus and then a beautiful dreamy blur that emanates out from around the area of focus. Um, Lens Baby has said that they think that this creative effect with that sweet spot and that beautiful dreamy bokeh pair beautifully with these aperture discs. Okay, let's go ahead and open this baby up. And here we have it. This is the Composer Pro 2 made by Lens Baby and the Double Glass 2 Optic also made by Lens Baby, already inserted into the Composer Pro 2. This entire unit will then attach to your camera. This is the part that attaches to the camera, and this is your lens area. Okay, so in addition to having the option to purchase this as a set, the Composer Pro 2, and the double glass two as a unit, you will also have the option to buy the optic separately, which you would want to do if you already own a Composer Pro 2. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this optic out so you can see what it looks like when it's not in the Composer Pro 2. So there it is. It's very nice and small fits right in my hand. It's very lightweight. It has nice build quality. And if you were to buy this 
on its own as a separate unit, just the optic, it would arrive in with uh, the lens cap and with a bottom cap as well. And I will show you, I have one of these from another optic, but the bottom cap often looks like this. The optic just screws in like that. And then your optic is always protected when it's not in your Composer Pro 2. The Double Glass 2 optic has an aperture range starting at f2.5 and going all the way up to f22. It is a 50 millimeter optic. Okay, so I'm really excited to attach this to my camera and try it out. Uh, before I do that, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Lens Baby Optic Swap system, I just want to give you a brief explanation of what it is. Um, you can go to the Lens Baby website and they do have a lot of videos, blogs, explanations on what the Optic Swap system is, what optics are available to purchase and how to use it. But just very briefly here, um, the, the Optic Swap system consists of the Composer Pro 2 and various optics. And as you've seen, I've been able to um, pop it in really easily and pop it back out again. What is really fun and unique about this system is that Lens Baby has created a variety of optics and each optic offers a different effect. Um, and some of them have also the option for different focal lengths. So there are so many creative possibilities with this optic swap system. And I'm very excited to see what this new optic, the Double Glass 2, has to offer me. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly attach it to my camera. And it pops in just like any standard lens. I line it up with the little red dot on the composer to the little red dot on my camera. And there we go. So I love it. It is a nice compact system that packs a creative punch. Okay, so before I go out and make some photos with this new Double Glass 2, I need to show you what is in this Aperture Disc case. So I'm very excited about these. Lens Baby has told me that there are nine creative Aperture Discs in here. Um, so let's go ahead and open them up and see what shapes they are. Okay, so here they are. Let me go through them quickly. Uh, we have a starburst, a swirl, uh, this one looks like a like an ink splot or ink splat I guess. This looks like a diamond shape. Ooh, and this one, ooh, I'm very intrigued by this. This disc has three flying birds on it. I think that is going to be super fun to play around with. A star, a heart. Uh, this one looks like a rose. I believe we are calling this a whirlpool. And this has these slots, which are, can be placed in your optic either vertically or horizontally or even at an angle. The aperture discs just pop right into the optic. They stay connected in there by a magnetic structure. And you may have noticed when I was showing you the aperture disc holder that it has this um, handle on the bottom. 
So the handle also has a little cover attached to it. And if you remove this cover, it has a little magnet. And that is your tool for removing your aperture disc. And it just, you put it in there. You can see it just connects, comes right out. So that's a nice little feature of this aperture disc holder. Okay, I am headed out now with my new double glass to optic, as well as this fun new collection of aperture discs, all made by Lens Baby. I am hoping to create some images that are unique, beautiful, and whimsical. And I do plan to attach some of those images at the end of this video. So I hope that you will stay tuned. And I thank you very much for watching. Tiffany Kelly. I'm a portrait and fine art macro photographer based near Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm super excited to talk to you today about the newest Lens Baby product, which is the Double Glass 2. So let's dive right in and talk about it. So you can buy it either just the optic ex itself, if you already have like a composer or a spark or a fixed body and you just need the optic, you can buy it that way. Or if you're maybe newer to Lens Baby or you've been wanting a Composer Pro 2, you can buy it bundled with the Composer Pro 2. So love that you can buy it either way so that you can kind of get just what you need. Um, I already had a Composer Pro 2, so I just got the optic itself and popped it in there. It is a 50 millimeter lens, which I love because I feel like it's a really versatile link that works for a lot of different genres and it goes from an aperture of f 2.5 to f 22 so big range there um, in terms of the aperture that you can use with it and this lens has a sweet spot of focus and then really really beautiful blur that radiates out from that um, so it's beautiful to use just as is but i think what makes this lens really cool and unique is that it comes with a set of aperture discs um, that are magnetic that you can pop in and that will give a shape or a texture to the bokeh and the background and the light and your image 
really fun and um, really creative tool that you can use to get some really interesting images. So let's talk about your aperture discs. So they come in this handy dandy little tool, which like it's the little things in life, right? Like this thing is just so functional for what you need it to be. Um, all nine of your shaped apertures will come in there and love that everything's like connected so you don't lose your caps because I would be the person who would lose it. So just the detail and thought that they put into creating this, um, I love it. So all of your aperture discs will come in there and then this is a little magnetic tool that you can use um, to to pop in and out your aperture disc. So let's just show you so that it'll make a little bit more sense. Um, so you can pop it either in just with your fingers like that and then use the tool to really easily remove it. Really easy, I promise. Um, or you can pop it in with the tool as well. Um, so that's what it looks like when it has a disc in there. So really easy to use, really easy to pop in and out. Um, love that. So let's talk about the fun shapes that you get. So you've got slots. Um, which is my favorite for indoor work so far that I found. I think it works um, really well if you maybe don't have like defined points of bokeh, but you just have like general light or something in your background. It gives a really cool texture to that light in your background. Then you've got Whirlpool, which kind of looks like a rose or a flower to me, which of course I really like. Uh, you've got Drip Splat. Uh, you've got bird, which is my favorite for outdoor work. I just think it's so cool and like makes so much sense to have birds in the bokeh and an outdoor like nature image. So I really love that one. You've got diamond, which I found is fun if you have kind of like repeating bokeh in your background. You've got swirly. You've got Sunburst, which if you have the soft focus too, this one might look familiar um, because I think this one was included in there. And then you've got Star. And then Heart, which was also really fun for me to use with portraiture. So all of these discs give you really like endless creative potential. I think they're also going to sell blanks in a set of 10. So you could kind of punch in your own shape. Again, just endless creative potential. Um, so I am absolutely obsessed with these discs. I think they're so fun to play with and give such an interesting effect to your bokeh and your background. So I'm gonna dive in and show you some of the images that I've gotten and talk about some tips and tricks that helped me to get started with this lens that will hopefully help you also. So I thought I would share some of my sample images that I've taken as I have sort of learned how to use this lens. So I'm, you know, figuring out for the first time here as we get to know each other. Um, and I thought I would just share some of the kind of tips that I picked up along the way that helped me to really maximize the beauty of this lens. So first off, I thought that the effect of the aperture discs would be most apparent if I shot wide open. So all of the images that I've taken were with the aperture wide open at f2.5. So for me, I really wanted to enhance the, the bokeh and the fun shapes that I could get. So that's what I decided to do. Um, so this obviously was with the heart disc. I love what it did in the trees um, and in the bokeh, even kind of in some of them, you can see kind of subtly in the ground. Like this one, I loved how you could kind of see these subtle hearts in the ground as well. So what's kind of fun about this lens is it makes you really keep your eyes open and you're really having to pay attention to the light and how it falls on your subject and on your background and pay attention to things that maybe you wouldn't normally. Um, so I think this was the example that I was really shocked at how sharp it was in the center, especially with manual focus with a moving nine-year-old. So I was really impressed with the sharpness um, of the lens. And 
Um, love the blur that you get here. This is sort of um, just that native blur that I just absolutely love, especially for portraits, because I feel like the blur makes your eye just drawn right into to her eye or to the focal point of your image. Um, but in this one, I decided, you know, I needed to back up to really get more of the heart effect in the background since that's what I was going for. So backed up a little bit and was able to get more of those hearts up there that I was looking for and um, still got this beautiful blur on her. Again, I love how um, you know, her body and bottom of her hair is blurred out, which just really draws the viewer into her face and her expression. Um, same thing with this one. I really loved how I was able to get the heart bokeh on the ground. I thought that was super fun. And, you know, just kind of playing around a lot of times for manual focus with kids, because it's something I struggle with, I will have them not look at me so that um, it's not quite as obvious if their eye is slightly out of focus. It doesn't bother me as much if they're kind of not looking directly at the camera. Um, and I don't know what it is about this lens. I guess the quality of the blur really like spoke to me in black and white. I was really loving the black and white um, with this lens with the particular blur, but I wanted to get some color portraits as well. Again, this shows how you can get um, this sort of subtle hearts, even like kind of on the plants and things um, with your highlights within your image. And just another close up. And again, just kind of playing around with my background to try to see what I could get in terms of the hearts. And this was just the greenhouse where we were shooting and I thought it might be fun. Um, and then trying to get those detail images, which again, the heart effect is really subtle, um, but you can kind of see it if you're, if you're looking for it in the background. So that was just kind of my first attempt at playing around with this lens um, for portraits. So my main tips would be to shoot wide open or close to it if you're really trying to maximize the effect of the aperture disc and to just really pay attention to your background, to your bokeh, to your highlights in your image and how your light is, is falling. So like for example, um, in this one, because I have so much light falling on my background, I get lots of hearts there. Whereas this one, my background is so dark that I kind of lose that effect, which is fine. I still love the image, but something to just kind of keep your eyes open for when you're shooting and something to kind of think about. Um, and then I love shooting macro with this lens. I did that by adding on the lens baby macro filters. The only downside to that is that then you have to unscrew the filters to change out your aperture disc, but really that only takes a few seconds, so it wasn't a big deal to me. Another alternative, if you don't want to have to do that, would be that you could use extension tubes or you could use the macro um, converters by Lens Baby. So lots of options that would allow you to shoot within the macro range with this optic. And again, I think the aperture discs are just so fun for macro. Um, so this is using the bird disc. You can see as we go through the images, some are, are really like apparent what the shape is and some it kind of just gives a more subtle texture and I really love both ways. Um, this obviously was the heart disc in my backyard and then the bird disc, super fun. Um, then I went to the Botanical Gardens. This one was taken with the bird disc. Again, the bird disc. Um, so another thing for me, I like to shoot really up close macro, but to really show the effect um, of the texture and the shapes, I find myself backing up a little bit more and not shooting um, up super close. Um, this was with the Whirlpool. Really loved what it did. Um, with the bokeh here. And then I did a few pictures inside. Um, I do feel like for me and my experience, this lens really shines outside with lots of bokeh and lots of light, but you can certainly play with it indoors as well. Um, so I kind of intentionally had like a highlight um, on my table here and took some pictures inside with the line disc. And um, I did end up really loving these. I especially thought it was cool how like um, 
it kind of mimics the lines in the petals. Um, so I just thought that that was kind of neat to play around with and all kind of similar um, idea, but super fun to play with. And then back to the garden images. This obviously was the bird disc. I think you can tell which one was my favorite because I had a hard time taking the bird disc off of the lens because I just really love it and I think it's so fun. Um, lots of bird, lots of bird. Um, let's see, this one I think was diamond. Um, do something different, back to bird. Uh, this one I don't remember. Maybe whirlpool kind of looks like. Um, that's going to be my guess. And then if you find yourself like me wondering what you used, a good tip is in Lightroom, um, add like the disk that you used in your keywords when you're uploading so that, um, you know, while it's fresh in your mind so that later you can kind of remember what you used. Yeah, this one was definitely Whirlpool, Whirlpool. And so for this one, for example, I was going for more of an abstract image which is another genre that I think is super fun to play around with. You can get really cool abstract images. I have some few at the end, um, a few at the end that I'll show as well. Um, this one was diamond. You can see some are like really pronounced and then some are kind of more subtle, but I thought diamonds worked really well in this instance with the sort of repeating patterns. And then diamonds as well, more diamonds, more birds, <laughs> more birds, uh, more birds. Okay, but I wanted to show you guys, yeah, just a few more abstract examples. This is literally just shooting the sky in my backyard, so I didn't need to have an interesting subject um, or anything, and I thought it was just really fun to sort of play around with shooting intentionally out of focus um, in order to get some cool abstract images. So. One thing I want to do um, soon is sort of replicate that with the different disks and sort of see what kind of abstract imagery I can get um, by just shooting intentionally out of focus with all the different disks. So um, again, just to kind of re recap, super fun to play around with. Definitely feel free to experiment and be creative. Um, Think about your aperture and shooting wide open or pretty close to it if you really want to maximize the effect of the shapes. Um, and what else? Be really mindful of, of your light and your bokeh and your background um, while you're shooting. Really keep an eye out for how the effect is working or not working so that you can kind of adjust accordingly. And I think most importantly, have fun. It's such a cool creative tool. I think it will really give you images that otherwise you could not achieve straight out of camera. And I don't know if you're ever feeling like me. Sometimes I feel like, you know, especially with macro, I've been photographing macro for so long, for so many years. Sometimes it kind of feels like I'm shooting the same thing in the same way over and over again. And I feel like I kind of get in a rut. So I feel like this is a great tool to kind of bust through that rut and allow you to really think outside of the box and add something creative and unique to your images. So I hope that you love this lens as much as I do. And thanks for listening along and watching this video.
Hello, I'm Juan Pablo. I'm a graphic designer, photographer, and artist based in Guatemala. I'm a lens baby ambassador, and my style is about creating portraits full of art with a vintage and nostalgic feeling. In this video, I'm going to test the new lens created by Lens Baby, which is the Double Glass 2. Finally, after many days of waiting, I've got this box in the mail, so let's see what it has inside. As this lens works with the optic swap system, I need a structure for it, so I ordered the Composer Pro 2. And this is the optic that has its unique features. Within this box, we can find the Composer Pro 2. We need a body to support any other optic that is compatible with the optic swap system by Lens Baby. I've never had one like this before, so I ordered this body to use the Double Glass 2. The Composer Pro 2 has a mechanism of twisting the lens and locking it to have a precise position. It also has a wheel that we can twist to focus the image, no matter what optic we're using with it. And now, the most expected moment, the double glass 2. Here's a box that contains the optic. Let's open it. And then there's this thing, I don't know exactly what it is. This optic comes with a plastic protector and here it has the aperture dial that goes between f2.5 to f22. Ok, wait, these are different shapes that we can use with the optic. It seems that I can put them in the lens like this. Ok, now I have a shape in front of the lens, and then let's remove it and change it. Ok, it's harder than I thought. But look, here's a magnet, let's see if it works. This box comes with 9 shapes and 2 additional empty circles, with I can punch using a machine to have any other shape. By default, the Composer Pro 2 comes with the Sweet 50 optic. I'm going to replace it by twisting the optic and then changing it with the Double Glass 2. Ok, so here we are. This seems like a wonderful lens. In theory, we say that whenever we have a shape in front of a wide aperture, the bokeh in the picture will have the same shape. I tried this years ago when I started practicing photography. For that experiment, I used a 50mm lens and pieces of cardboard, but I think the double glass 2 optic will make it easier. These are my first pictures using this lens. I took advantage of the holiday lights to try how this optic works. The effects are so creative, I used an aperture of f4 to have sharpness and detail without losing the bokeh in the background. Every shape gives me a different effect and I think this is a very creative optic to try different things in my photographs. I love my first experiments, however, I think it's time to test this lens doing some portraits. So, come with me to this new experience. For this experiment, we went to the forest. I needed a place where I could find trees and branches with the sunlight coming towards the camera 
to create more bokeh in the background. The camera body I'm using is the Sony A7C. After setting the new optic and the camera, we're ready to shoot. The first shape is the slots. Look at the background, how the bokeh starts appearing while I twist the focus ring. The next one is the sunburst. The bokeh seems like many suns in the background and it looks so dreamy. The next one is the Whirlpool. Perhaps this is my favorite one because it looks like atmospheric roses in the background. Now we're going to try the drip splat. As you can see, the background looks so surreal depending on the focus point. The next one is the swirly. I love the movement that this shape adds to the background, making me feel dizzy. The next one is the shape of birds. I don't know exactly how to describe this effect. Perhaps it's going to make more sense while I use it in different situations. Just remember, the direction of the birds will change the direction of the bokeh in the final picture. The next one is the diamond. 
perhaps this is one of my favorite shapes because of the design that it has. I think it gives a structured and luxurious atmosphere to the pictures. Then is the star. Perhaps one of the most dreamy and beautiful shapes in the kit. We can use it for many different effects, especially for dreamy pictures. And last, but not least, we have the heart. This shape is a must in the collection, perhaps one of the most versatile and iconic shapes that can be used in many photo shootings. After going through the process of experimenting this lens, I noticed that it's a beautiful piece for those photographers and videographers that want to go beyond the limits of a regular lens. The double glass tube will be very convenient because of its magnetic system attached to another body, such as the composer tube. Then we will have an extraordinary bokeh in our pictures that imitates the look of the old lenses. I like that the body and the optic are metallic pieces, making them more durable and reliable and aesthetically. Both look beautiful when they are attached to the camera. Personally, I had a hard time trying to focus at the beginning of the photo shooting. Perhaps it was because I didn't have enough contrast in the forest and the camera's focus peaking system got a little bit crazy, but with more practice my next images will start to improve. Something that I've learned using the lens baby is to love the process of creating and experimenting rather than the final results. And I think that with this new lens I enjoyed both. So this is it, the lens baby double glass 2. So far one of my favorite optics. Thank you so much for watching this video, my name is Juan Pablo and I encourage you to create, experiment and shoot extraordinary with Lens Baby. See you next time.
Lens Baby's Double Glass 2 is a reinvention of a classic bestseller for Lens Baby. It uses the optic swap system, so you can use it with a lens body like the Composer Pro 2, which is what we're using here. It's a fully manual lens, so you can adjust the aperture in the front from f2.5 at its brightest all the way down to about f22. And you can adjust where the focus sweet spot is by moving it around to the position you want and then using the manual focus ring to get that spot tack sharp. The results are simply beautiful. Toward the open end of the aperture, this dreamlike soft focus fall off surrounding your subject, drawing the attention where you want it most, and making everything glow with an amazing radiance. It's pretty attention grabbing. With the aperture stopped down, the effect is well controlled, so you can choose in every moment the strength of the softness, all while keeping your subject at the very heart of your frame. With all this control over your image, you'll fall in love with photography all over again. So with the fully manual aperture, focus ring, and spot focusing, this is already a great optic, but there's one more detail. Lens Baby ships the double glass too with a whole stack of drop-in, magnetic, creative apertures with differently shaped cutouts, giving you yet another way to make the image unique. As you drop these in front of the glass, you're shaping the bokeh and other elements. You can then create art out of the bokeh itself, which turns the whole image into kind of a painter's canvas with almost unlimited possibilities. Playing with the many dimensions of the Double Glass 2 by Lens Baby brings so much creative life to photography, whatever your subject or emotion, and wherever you bring it. Lens Baby family, just wanted to pop on here and say thank you so much for attending the launch party for Double Glass 2 and to give a massive shout out to all the incredible ambassadors, beta testers, and educators who share all this beautiful information today. If you're 20 people like me, I say it's increased to get everyone involved. I'm just being here and showing up today. Just as a reminder, if you happen to miss out on any part of this, we will be replaying it all day for you. And if you want to grab your double glass, here they are available right now. If you scan this QR code, head over to Baby. Now we are going to grab there. Make sure that you're one of those. Thank you so much for being here. I mean, our mission here is to help people, creators, photographers, videographers. Absolutely could not do it without you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being, for watching from wherever you are in the world. And uh, 